Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Ray's Days, episode 101 of the show where I recap my week. Which started off pretty bad. Last week, last week recording specifically, I was struggling. I felt stupid. My brain was not functioning at all. And for a good few days, I was just, the be- at the beginning of this week, like through, through like the beginning of Thursday, I was like headaches. I was getting headaches every day around midday. I think it was from the wind. But I felt stupid. I maybe allergies, you know? And also just depressed too. Just like zero energy. Just, you know, got into that spiral of like why am I even doing this stuff? Nobody cares. No, it's like what am i like nothing's ever going to work ever i'm wasting my time what am i even doing here depressed but i think if i had to guess either allergies could have been it like i was literally getting headaches every day around the same like around four o'clock every day i was like getting a headache or about to get a migraine and i think what it was because I talked about the wind last week. <clears throat> the wind was blowing, I believe, I don't know. If it was blowing in the direction, I think I think it was blowing east to west. Which if it was, to the east of where I live is the Salton Sea. Which is a toxic place. Toxic there is so much death there. There are so many chemicals from the runoff. It is just a disgusting place. It is not good. And there is, if you live there, a ex- exponentially higher risk for cancer because of the wind and the chemicals and dust that the wind kicks up. That is just the residue of that area from the all the the washes from all the farmland all the chemicals just disgusting and the fact that it's drying up so all of those things end up getting into the air whenever it's windy so i think what happened is that that wind blew all of those chemicals into the valley through the valley and because i live in a poorly insulated garage a lot of that got in here and caused headaches so who knows that would be my guess or just allergies or it's a tumor it's not a tumor uh no i don't i don't i have no idea i've been fine so thursday was like the turning point because I paint live every Thursday on TikTok at 4.20 p.m. Pacific time, right? Come hang out with me. I'm smoking weed, not on camera because it's TikTok. I'm listening to some classic podcast episodes from, from, from some of my favorite podcasts that I listen to. Uh, last week was All Fantasy Everything, which is a very common one. I will a lot of times listen to Doug Loves Movies as well. Uh, sometimes I will listen to Screen Drafts, which is a, a another great podcast. Um, those tend to be the top three podcasts that I will listen to. Uh, so you can come listen to the podcast along with me uh, while I paint. And I do seven paintings. Uh, each painting takes about ten minutes or so. So most of the time, the entire recording length is around two and a half hours. So come hang out. We're hanging out. If you want, or you can put it on mute and listen to whatever you want to listen to and see when I paint. You can see the paintings, and then they get released Monday through Friday the next week. 
But because I was painting Thursday and I felt so just depressed, unmotivated, exhausted, and I was sleeping okay. It was not a sleeping issue. It's not like I was sleep deprived. I was sleeping okay. But I was exhausted. And I just drank a ton of tea. I I was going to pick up energy drinks or get some energy order some energy drinks. But I decided not to. It was like I have all this tea here. I like drinking tea. Let me just I brewed two pots of tea. Right? I went through eight tea bags and I had a great time painting. Like it was the first time while painting and recording it and all that stuff where I kind of felt like I got lost. Like there was one where I spent like 15 minutes on a painting, which is the the longest ever, ever in the almost 1800 paintings I've done for the many faces the longest I've ever taken on a single painting is 15 minutes. And that happened last week. So it was fun. I enjoyed it. I'm enjoying painting on Thursdays. And I needed to feel, I needed to be awake. Because there's been times where I've painted and I'm just tired. And it's like, I just want to get out of there. Like, I have to finish seven paintings. Like, win, lose, or draw, I have to do it. There's been times where it took like four hours. Like there's been live streams. I think it was back when I was doing YouTube where I went like four hours to do seven paintings. And they probably didn't even turn out that great. But I had to get them done. They have to get done Thursday. Um, so thankfully, thir- and ever since then, like Friday, I felt fine. Yesterday, I was good. Today, I'm good which is great compared to last Sunday where I literally just felt like I could not think of anything. I could not put us, I could barely put a sentence together. I I literally had to re-record, which I've never done, maybe once in the entire three years of daily podcasts that I've been putting out with the Ray Taylor show. My Scream 2022 review, I hated When I was done with it, I was like, this is garbage. I couldn't think of things. I couldn't like, I'm, I'm bad with recalling names anyway. I'm horrible with names. That is the number one thing I will like get lost in my head about trying to figure out. I had that with all words last week. So I took a break and I re-recorded Monday's episode last week and I thought it was I mean, it was definitely better than the first one. And the rest of the week, I got through it. And just, but still, I was I was just not happy with how I felt and what I did. It was, like, it felt like such a regression to the progress that I feel like I've been making, trying to make these episodes better. And it's a bummer. It is a bummer. It's probably why I was depressed Sunday or Monday. Like, why am I even doing this shit if I can't even get better at it? And then Thursday it turned around and I started feeling better. And then, you know, had a lot of had a lot of work. Thankfully, like I can my the beginning of my weeks is generally when I just watch things. So I watched like I binged the the show The After Party, which I talked about on Wednesday. The Many Faces is an ongoing abstract ink portrait series that I started many years ago. I release a new face every day, but go to inspireddisorder.com to check them out. So many available. But as a listener to The Ray Taylor Show, you can save 10% when you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out. So go to inspireddisorder.com slash TMF, that stands for The Many Faces, Go check them out, browse the entire collection, and when you decide on a piece, or maybe multiple pieces, make sure you use coupon code INSPIRED when you check out, and you'll save 10%. As a big thank you for checking out my work, for collecting my work, and for listening to The Ray Taylor Show. And with that said, let's get back to the show. Wow. 
what else? I mean, I'm still watching a bunch of ER. I'm just, I'm so close to finishing it now. I'm like, I'm at season 10, I think, of 15 seasons. And it's, it's, I'm just, I just need to get through it. Like, I need to finish it. I can't just let it go at this point. Like, if I, if I gave up, like, at season six, I could have walked away and been fine. But now I'm, like, sucked into all these characters. It's crazy how, throughout the show, how long some of these actors stick with the show and how they leave. Like, some of the, the, the things on the show, some of the people on the show just get destroyed. There's this one guy. It feels like I've talked about this on the show already. But there's a character that's, like, a super right-wing character. And just super conservative, asshole, racist, homophobic, all of the whole checklist of conservative values. Probably pretended to be a Christian. This show brutalized this character, which before they started brutalizing him, they tried, they definitely attempted and somewhat successfully made him like. At, at least somewhat like you cared about him at least like a bit like you, you gave him a little bit of heart some redeeming qualities were mildly added to this character to make him a little bit better of a person and then there's an episode where they just cut his arm off <laughs> like he gets like characters main characters in the show bad things definitely happen to him but like this guy gets his arm chopped off from a helicopter they're like on the roof getting a getting a patient off the helicopter and he's like one of the high end surgeons of the show and it just clear just chops his arm right off and then they reattach his arm but like it constantly gets stuck in things and like not it like completely is just dying off the limb this arm that gets reattached then they give him a prosthetic arm so now the actor has to wear like there's some cg going on and they have like a false stub thing and then they but then they give him a prosthetic so he's able to put his hand into something and then in an episode a helicopter just falls on him like, after some bad things happen in general. Like, this guy is just living in hell in every episode in some level. In addition to losing his arm. In addition to that arm that got reattached falling apart. In addition to these prosthetics being malfunctioning and causing him problems. It's just like karma biting him in the ass for how horrible he was throughout the show. And the fact that he's a character, I mean, there's still kind of remnants of that type of archetypal character, that racist conservative character in the show. But in that that last episode where it's like just shit hits, the, like it just everything's going, you start to feel you start to sympathize with this horrible person, right? Because he's still a person. He might be a horrible person, but at least he's a person and he's like being brutalized by life left and right. But then there's this this episode where a, the helicopter just loses control and falls directly into the ambulance bay where he just happens to stand. It made me laugh so hard. I'm like, they don't give a fuck about this character. They just killed him in like another heli tragic helicopter thing. But then there's also there was an episode where they show. It's kind of like what happened in San Diego where somebody stole a tank and they're like causing havoc, except for, you know, the person that steals the tank. The show takes place in, in Chicago. Somebody steals a tank and he's using that tank to go because he's going to blow up one of the doctors that, that treated him like shit or whatever. And there's this thought that I've had in real life and in like movies and stuff. It's like because this tank is like going down these residential streets business streets whatever but running over cars left and right you know you see like just pedestrians car just people's cars getting destroyed in tv shows and movies and i've always wondered like things do happen like 
literally somebody did at one point steal a tank and run over cars. Like, do insurance companies cover that shit? Like, the, the reality of what happens if you own a car and it's parked on a public street and then it gets demolished by, like, the cops or a tank or whatever it is. Like, are you just screwed? Because I know insurance companies try the very hardest not to pay for anything. Like, that is historically the insurance company's M.O., to not pay for something. If there is the smallest excuse or reasoning not to cover something, they will not do it. So a tank running over your car, is that is there like a clause in insurance that like covers that? I'm sure there is, but it's like I don't know. It's just it, it's just something that like I know happens and happens a lot in movies, happens in real life sometimes. We're just like people's cars get destroyed and it's like do you just like that could upend somebody's life if you don't have good insurance? Or insurance doesn't cover it, or you don't have insurance. You know, you're just barely scraping by, and then all of a sudden a tank rolls over your car. And now you're like, well, that's where I lived. Now what? I mean, it's, I don't know. I smoke weed and watch ER. These are the things I, I think about sometimes. Um,. But yeah, Thursday turned everything around, which was nice. Which was nice. Uh, Friday, super motivated Friday. It's weird how, like, I'm probably bipolar on some. I just watched Taylor Tomlinson, stand-up comedian. She has a new special on Netflix, and she's talking about... She's very open with her mental, with mental health and all these things and basically talks about how she's bipolar and uh it's you know and similarly to i'm recapping the show dave and one of the characters on that show is the hype man is bipolar uh and it's you know i'm starting to think i mean i've never i'm untreated i haven't been to a doctor in at least a decade i haven't had insurance since 2015 uh so dealing with the things I deal with are on a very DIY level. Whether it's trying to use meditation, whether it's self-medicating with alcohol and weed, which, you know, I've, for the most part, stopped drinking. I haven't, like, quit drinking. I just, I just stopped. I just felt like, for a lot of reasons, I need to stop. And that's been nice, because I got to that, you know, I was just in my head. I was like, I've just kind of enough. I can't be drinking at this, like, regularity that I'm drinking. But now I still have weed, which I I love weed. Weed's great, you know? I mean, it definitely can can trigger and has at, at times of my life triggered, like, panic attacks and anxiety. But it can also help. helps a lot with, you know, relaxation and just laughing. Just like getting to a place where you can just enjoy something for the pure love of joying, enjoying a thing. You can just laugh openly and freely. That's amazing. Uh, but yeah, I might, I might definitely have some of that because, you know, as depressed as I was at the beginning of the week, Friday, I was like, I redid, I did so much just in addition to the normal stuff which you know thursday i paint friday is where i process the paintings and i photograph them and edit all the videos and get everything organized and get everything packaged up and put away and and filed away which takes a big chunk of my day but then also and then i was catching up on having to do the clips for this show which i i want to get done on mondays but you know i kept putting it off because i was so unmotivated and depressed the beginning of the week so I had a lot of things on my plate in general. I also designed a bunch of new merch, uh, which look out for new merch coming out regularly. Join Inspired Disorder Plus today. Head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus to join. 
Membership includes members-only discounts and deals. You get access to the Ray Taylor Show completely ad-free, as well as bonus episodes. You get access to the complete live painting archive. You also get access to every single podcast ever produced by Inspired Disorder, hosted by Ray Taylor. You get access to Ray Taylor's personal blog, as well as the opportunity to ask me any questions. So if you want to start a podcast, you're into art, ask me anything. And so many more things are being added every day to Inspired Disorder Plus. So sign up today, become a member, head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. I went through my entire schedule, my calendar to like really map out the time I spend working on these things to get a visual representation of what my Sunday looks like, right? Where my Sunday is like I start at noon and then I'm done at like 10 o'clock at night or, you know, somewhere around that area, depending on how long the episodes are, how slow the internet is to upload. All of these different factors can, can kind of fluctuate that, that number. But at least to get like an idea and then also same thing you know putting the how the time spent painting on Thursdays put in the time spent what I do on on Fridays the prep work that I do on Saturdays because I also want to start doing chipping away at other big projects that I need to get done like I need to go through and inventory all of my artwork which I've started to do I've done probably 500 I've gone through 500 paintings out of 1,800, so I'm, I'm getting there. I've got a big chunk of that. But just putting these, these projects on days like Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, which were kind of my free days, just to hold myself accountable on those days to do just a little bit, very small amounts, because I just want to be successful at, at getting that added to my routine. And then once I'm once it's added to the routine, then I can get more elaborate with it and do more with it and then burn myself out in another way. But w- the, the first part is just to make them the easiest thing to do. And an example would be like I had that Fitbit wristband to remind myself to one of the things I wanted it for was as a reminder to get up and move every once in a while, because I sit down at, you know, watching movies. I'm sitting down, you know, binging TV shows. I'm sitting down editing videos. I'm sitting down painting. I sit down to do a lot of things. So I I need to be reminded to get up and move because I'm in a lot of pain. I need to just be more active in general because I'm not doing anything. Most of the time because I'm just here in this enclosed space making things trying to focus on just just trying to find a way to be successful so I added these reminders that are at 12, 2, 4 and 6 o'clock because those are the kind of those are the hours generally most days where I'm sitting down the most Right. So a lot of times I start working earlier than noon. But then if I'm having a slow day, generally around noon is when I'm starting. And then I'll just work up until I can't work. I'm tired and then I go to sleep. You know, you know, I I my wind down thing, but I added those just kind of every two hours, four days a week. And all I'm doing is just like getting up and swinging a kettlebell ten times that's it 10 times put it down go back to work so by the end of the day i will have done 40 kettlebell swings and it doesn't it's not like big i'm not exhausted i'm not like getting my heart rate up or anything like that i'm doing basic easy shit like ridiculously easy am i feeling sore yes because i'm doing 40 kettlebell swings when in the past years and years and years i've done zero so yes is it is it is it doing a thing to me yes 
And can I easily add more weight to that? Can I just get turn that into doing what I used to do, which is all, just full out kettlebell workouts? Absolutely. That is what it's going to become. So Friday, I was just like all over it. Literally, like I did the majority of the work that I'll do in a week, I did all on Friday. Because it was like the first day where I felt like I woke up and I felt clear headed. So I have my calendar all worked out now where I'm going to start just chipping away at these big projects that I want to get done. Just little things, just so I can get used to, like, every Monday, this is what I do. Just the same way that, like, every Sunday I've recorded this show, the Ray Taylor Show, for, like, three years now. And it's just in stone that... On Sundays, I record. Everybody knows that. They know not to bother me. They know not to ask me to do shit. Because Sundays are when I record. And then over the years, I've made Saturday is my prep day. So I do all my prep on Saturday, and then Sunday I do all my recording and production. And then with the painting, doing paintings weekly, Thursday is my painting day, and then Friday is is the uh, production day so that everything is ready to go by Monday. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're kind of these free days where I can kind of just do whatever. But if I have things, just these little things that I need to make sure I get done each day that will take, I mean, if I want, like if I'm feeling like absolute shit, right? Like I get COVID, I'm like, one step away from having to go to a hospital, I can still get these little things done on these days. Enough to make sure that that becomes a habit. Just trying to be a better employee to myself. Just trying to... Just trying to do what I wish. Like, if I was rich and could afford to hire somebody, this is the quality of work. This is what I would want them to. This is what I would expect of them. So I need to expect that of myself. And it's hard to do those things that are boring. And, and you know, I mean, it's easy to do this. It's easy to paint. It's easy to do those things. I got used to doing the editing and all that. That used to be a headache. Editing clips for the Ray Taylor show is a, a pain in the ass. But I'm going to get better at it. I mean, I've, I've, I've gotten, it's gotten less of a pain in the ass. Uh, but that's one where I just like, oh, I'm going to do three clips of every show. And it's like I didn't ramp up to that. I just started with that. And it's been a tough transition. Um, so I'm trying to kind of solidify all those things in my week. Um, and it's I've had like this yearning. I mean, especially watching ER you know, watching so many seasons, every season there's a, a holiday episode. You know, Halloween episode, then holiday. I have been yearning for the holidays. In the first time in my life since childhood, like I'm excited for October, November, and December. Not only the fact that, you know, it's not summer anymore, which is starting to heat up. And it's going to be 120 degrees here before I know it. October is when things start to cool down. And I love I love October. You know, uh, Halloween is my favorite holiday, despite the fact that I don't really participate. I just enjoy the time of year. I enjoy the holiday. Um, and then Christmas. It's just like I like wa seeing Christmas on like the holiday episodes. Like, oh, man, even though I'm like I don't participate in it. I just like the cheery vibe despite the fact that the reality of it is most people are assholes around Christmas, I think it's the fact that I've finally gained enough distance from working in retail. Like, I used to work at a movie theater and then at Costco for since high school. And those are two places that get really busy around the holidays. The movie theater is the busiest day is on the holidays. Uh, but I finally gained enough distance, I think, from working at Costco to like enjoy the holidays again so I, it's weird it's weird to have like those feelings of like man i can't wait for october and also it's i can't wait for summer to be over because i know it's going to be hot i know it's going to be miserable 
I just can't wait for that to be over. I want it to be cooler again. I want it to be nicer weather again. So anyway, that's been my week. Hope everybody else has had a great week. You're clear-headed. You're doing you're you're following your dreams just a little bit. Just start small. Just start small. Everything grows. Like I couldn't have done all of the things I do. No way I would have been sustainable to do all of those things on day one. Had to start small. And you're learning such it's so much learning. Anyway, have a great week, everybody. Take care. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.